Hey guys, I'm Razor, and I'm going to show you an updated tutorial on how to create sabers for PC Beat Saber. So first, you're going to want to make sure that you have Blender installed. This is going to be a pretty basic tutorial on Blender and Unity. It's not going to show you how to use them specifically, but it will show you the basics and what you'll need to know to get started. So first, make sure you have Blender installed. To get Blender installed, make sure that you go to blender.org and then go to download and download the blender for your os so once you have blender installed you can go ahead and open it and just click new file general and for me i already have this set up so i have the template mesh in there but if you don't that's okay in the description of the video there will be the template and you can just download that once you have that downloaded you can go to file import fbx and then go to wherever that was downloaded and upload it for you it may be at the center like for me i have it set up so it's opposite so the saber like the point is facing this direction so when i'm in top view it looks like this instead of like this so i usually just keep it like this off the side just as a little template to see but i know i'm doing it right so for the basics of the keystrokes and everything to add objects shift a to add an object and you can select so you can add a cube you can add a circle you can add icosphere whatever to select let's say you have multiple meshes we'll just duplicate this duplicate is shift d by the way let's say i have all of these and i, I want to select each one of these cubes. I can hit A to select all, and then I can hit X to delete. If you're in the edit mode, by hitting tab, you can move around these vertices. Or if you click the face select, you can select faces and move faces. But we don't need that for now. So I'm going to hit X to delete and delete those. So to start off, I'm just going to start off with a simple handle, the cylinder, scaling it down by clicking s and then moving my mouse closer to the center of the origin and then hit r for rotate x for the x-axis and then 90. so for any object or for any movement like rotation scale or movement you can hit g to move and you can hit x y or z depending on the axis that you want to lock it to if you wanted to lock it to multiple axes you could do you can move it and then hit X shift Z. That'll move it on the X and Y, which is the red for X and green for Y. Or if you want to move it on the Z axis up and down, then you'll just hit Z and it will move it on the Z axis. So I'm going to go ahead and scale this down and move it on the Y axis to make sure that it is just, just a good handle. I'll say that's, that's okay. That's fine. <clears throat> let's say i wanted to make this kind of like an inverted shape like it was more like this i guess if i wanted to do a handle shape like that all i could do is hit tab to go into edit mode and then out of here hit Control r to add a loop cut click and then right click to move, move it back to the middle and then i can just hit s to scale it down and then click again to confirm once you have that, I think that's a good looking handle. So now we're going to move on to the blade. For the blade, I'm going to add in a new cylinder. You could either add in a new cylinder or you could possibly do a different way of selecting this face and extruding it out, which I'll show you how to do in just a second. But for this, I'm just going to do this, scale it to about the size, and then hit tab, hit three to go into face select mode, select the face, and then G, Y, move it out. And then scale it down so it's a bit more point. I suggest when you're doing blades that you don't, one, you don't go all the way out here because it's actually like a few inches. It actually cuts off around here for some reason. I'm not sure why, but it's whatever. And you don't, 
always go in to a point like this because it'll always end up showing somewhere around here as the actual end of it just because there's not enough pixels to render it like that. So to combat that, I usually end up doing something like this. I move it out here and then I extrude it again by hitting E and then scaling this part down more. So it's kind of more of a needle. If you wanted to say you wanted to make the blade attached to this, you could also, I'm just going to hide this real quick. If I hit H, you can hide objects. Under here, I'm going to go into edit mode, hit three for face select, select this face and then hit E to extrude it outwards. And then move it to a position that I like. Scale down, extrude it again, scale down. And then I have that. But I'm going to keep this separated blade only because it'll be easier to add materials later. Let's say you wanted to add a ring. You could either do this, if you just wanted a simple ring, you could do mesh, torus, and then under the settings here, you can change with the minor radius to make it thinner or thicker, whatever you want. I usually end up going around 0 0.8. That's pretty good thickness. Scaling it down, RX90, and then moving it to the place that you want. I'll leave that there. You may be thinking, it's, there's too many edges. I don't like the edges. So to fix that, I'm going to click on the object, right click, and go to Shade Auto Smooth. Shading Auto Smooth will keep these creases if it's above 30 degrees, you can change that by going to this vertex panel and the normal. And then you can just change this if I want it to be, if it's over 90 degrees. So I'll say 100 degrees. It should smooth everything out that is under 100 degrees. So you'll notice that these edges are still creased. So if I just wanted that, I can just keep increasing it, but I'm going to keep it at 30 because I'll make it still smooth and you can see the important details. For tortoises, you don't want to auto shade smooth because sometimes they'll still have these creases. I mean, you could do that. You could just bump up the auto smooth, but it's just not worth it. You can just hit shade smooth and that'll shade the entire object smooth. This one, I'm also going to shade auto smooth, keep that crease there. And it's looking pretty good. If you wanted to add a text, it's a little bit different. So you can hit shift A, Go to text and add in the text you want. Then I'm going to scale this down just so you can see it all. And then under paragraph alignment, I'm going to change this center, center, and that's good. Once you've done that, I'm going to add a curve circle. A circle curve allows you to move stuff. It's just a circle, but like it's smoother so you can move these points around, do whatever you want with them. But I, it's probably just best to keep it like this. Under the text, go to the modifiers tab, which is this wrench right here. Add a modifier, curve. This eyedropper, and select the curve, and it should add it to there. Some Maybe you want to just scale it down a little bit so it's actually facing that, and then scaling that up so you can see it. And then rotating it so it is actually visible and you can see it on the outside like that. Once you've done that, you can select both of them, X90, and then scale it down to how you like it. If you don't like this default font, that's good. I don't either. So I'm going to go to a website. This is just my preferred website. You can go to wherever you want. I usually use defont.com because they have a lot of fonts you can just download for free. And I'm just going to find anything. I'm going to use. Uh, I kind of like I kind of like this top one. I do like this one. I want to download this one. And then drag one of these. I'm going to use the regular because the other one's italic, and I don't want italic. Drag that out to downloads wherever you want it. And then back in Blender, under the text, go to font, and then hit this file button. And then go to where wherever you had it saved. I'm going to click this one. And there you go. Maybe it'll overlap. That's fine. Just scale it down to wherever you need it to be. And now you have your own custom font on there. Very cool. 
But there's going to be something in Unity called backface culling. That, is, that basically means that to save space, it'll try to, it won't render the back of, backs of faces. So if you looked in the camera on the inside, maybe you'll notice that these edges will be gone in game. Like you won't be able to see anything at all. And that is because of backface culling. So basically texts with it turned on, it looks like this. You can't see the back of the text. Some people don't like that. So if you wanted to see what, what like which faces were turned out, you can also go to this tab here and then go to face orientation. All these red spots means that it's facing inward and you'll, you won't be able to see them. So to fix that, I'm going to click it, go to the modifiers tab and add a solidify modifier. You can turn it up if you want. I am not going to. I'll just set it to about there. That looks, that's a lot. It does not look fine. It's messing with that a lot. I'll just give it a 0 0.01 just to make sure you can see it. Okay. By trying to apply it, it's not going to work because it is a curve or it's a text. So you're not going to be able to see anything. So make sure that you have all your settings correct and you like the way that it looks. So now you can right click convert to mesh. That'll apply all your modifiers and it'll now be parented and you don't need this circle anymore. So I'm going to send, I'm just going to center this with the ring that we have already. That looks fine. So I think this is a pretty good looking saber. I like the way that it looks. So I think we're ready to move it on to blend or to unity. I'm sorry. So before we export it, I'm going to go to unity.com to make sure that you have Unity downloaded. You go to unity.com, you can click download Unity and it will download it for you. You can just open it up, go through the install process and you'll be graded with Unity Hub. Unity Hub is basically just the launcher for all of your projects. You can see I got a lot of stuff, but in order to download the correct version of Unity, you're going to want to go to this link that'll be in the description labeled the unity download archive and you'll need unity 2019.3.15.f1 so here's 2019.3.15 there's no f1 that's okay but once you have it make sure you have unity hub installed because from here you can just click on unity hub and it'll open it up Unity Hub and install it, which is good because then you don't have to manually do it. And then once you have that installed, make sure you're going to want to get the asset creation project. You could, in theory, you could go to the Beat Saber modding group Discord and go into the pin messages and get the custom savers Unity project there. But I prefer to use this one because it has a lot more tools that I think are just a lot more helpful. So I'm just going to go to GitHub search tiny macaroni this is where you can also get the saber factory mod as well that'd be in his github and i scroll down to asset creation project click here and then scroll down to the readme and click download once that's downloaded you can unzip the file to wherever you want i have mine set to my downloads folder of course and then thrown in to my Unity projects with a lot of them. So it'll just be here. You can just ignore that for now, but make sure that you know where it is. Because once you have it downloaded, you can go to Unity Hub, you can click add, find the find where it's saved, and then click this, this folder. Make sure that if you have like if it's set to an outside folder where it's like this, and then there's another project inside of it. Make sure it's this one where you can see the assets, library, logs, everything else. Click that and then click select folder and it will load it up for you. I already have mine loaded up, so I'm just going to open it and wait for it to open. Oh, um, okay, we're gonna ignore that. Okay, so this happens to be my main project, but that's, that's fine. And it's, I'm not gonna worry about the tutorial. So I'm just gonna hide all the things that I don't need. <clears throat> so once you have it in here, it may, it's gonna look 
pretty blank. You're not going to have all these folders. That's that's fine. You may have this saver folder and it's going to have some shaders in it. This shaders folder you'll have you'll have some of the you have the standard shaders. Actually, that's a lot. There's not going to be anything. Basically, you're just going to look a lot different than this. This just happens to be my creation project that I just I forgot to click the other one. But uh, in here, you can either create a folder in here or you can create a folder through Blender. That's fine. I'm going to create a folder in here. Create folder. I'm going to name it just tutorial for now. And open it up. Back in Blender, I'm going to delete this template. You don't need it. And then file, export, FBX. Go to your Unity install. If you don't know where it is, you can go into Unity, right click, go to show and explore, and then copy this. Go to Blender, paste it, and then find find the folder and then just name your FBX. I'm just going to keep it on title. I don't really care. Then hit export. Back in Unity, it should show up. Cool. And here is why I'm using the Saber Factory exporter for this is because I can it can create the Saber with all its scripts for me. So I'm just going to take this, drag it into the template prefab under the Saber tools by clicking Saber tools. And then I'm going to name it. And then I'm going to create the right saver just because it's custom savers mod won't read it correctly for some reason. I'm not sure why, but I'm just, I just do that because it's, it'll be a lot easier for, for the people that have it. This drawing material, I'm going to leave it blank for now just because I will talk about trails later, but I will change down the trail length to 10 and change it to our trail width. Once you're done with that, you can just hit create template and it will show up for you. I messed up the spacing on this. So I'm just gonna click the right saber and move it out a little bit more just by, I'm just gonna go, to, yeah, like that, that's fine. So moving these game objects, the left and right saber, those will not, affect the they're not going to affect anything it's the main the main thing that you have to worry about moving is the actual mesh inside of it i can move these to wherever i want and they will still not affect the actual position of it it's just the mesh inside of these game objects but you may notice that the guides are not it's not facing the right direction that is because the saber template in Blender was facing the wrong way. That's okay. We can just control select both of these and under the rotation, move it to 180 degrees on the Y axis and you're good. So first we're gonna have to, you're gonna have to get some shaders. On the base scene, you're gonna have some shaders built in. It's gonna be crazy basic though. Honestly, it's, it's just a problem. But there's a ton of other discords that you can look and find them, or maybe Patreons if you're willing to pay for them. Because I know I Smell Food has a Patreon, tons of great shaders, I love them. I honestly, it's like my favorite trail shader. It's worth the 20 bucks if you're really into the saber making. So 100% go for that one. Uh, there's Osicore's Discord, which I will link in the description. It's, it's, that would have, I'm sorry, that one has a lot of different shaders as well. And I, I suggest getting some of those, but if you don't, if you can't pay or you don't feel like joining a different discord other than BSMG, BSMG under PC 3D modeling, you can go into the pins and scroll down to tax shaders V2. Here you can download the material sample unity package. This will just have the materials and the shaders. This one has the saver samples up here. If I please do not take them and re-export them to model saver because we, it will not be approved and it is frowned upon to 
re-upload other people's savers. So please do not do that. But uh, so I just download this one. This unless you wanted to like look at it and see what's see what's happening there, it's not worth it. I just don't do that. I just I just get this one. Once you download it though, I'm going to re-download it because I yeah it's just I don't need it. But you can click it and it will automatically open in Unity. Make sure it's all selected, and you can just hit import. This may pop up, just hit fix now, it's fine. It's just talking about the normal maps not being set as normal maps. That's completely okay. So I'm going to use the base materials for these just because it's just gonna be easier. I can show you how to set some of them up as well. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know where they are. Oh, it's under materials, that's right. So on the materials folder and assets, you can choose whatever you want. I'm going to use metallic blue and throw that on the right saber. All of these are already set up with custom colors, so they should automatically work. So I'm just gonna do metallic blue and metallic red on these. That's kind of a nice handle. Honestly, I don't like how dark they are. So I'm going to click them and turn down the specularity to make it just a bit brighter. For these, for the text and the ring, for the ring, I think I'll just use this. Let's see how this dull red looks. It's pretty good. I still don't like how dark it is, so I'm gonna turn that. Spec uh, speculator doesn't do anything on this one. Sometimes it can take a lot of like messing around with these just to see what looks good and what does not. So uh, ambient lighting. There we go. That yeah, looks good. Okay. So I'll do that. And I will turn up this one in the ambient lighting in this one, make the color brighter and drag it onto there. Cool. So once I've done that, I'm going to show you how to use the actual Beat Saber shaders that have come with the Saber project because it is quite important to know how to use them. So under your folder, wherever you want to save them, you can just right click, go to create material. I'm not going to name them because I'm insane and I don't name my materials. But under here, go down to Beat Saber. And then I suggest Unlit Glow. This basically just means that it is unlit. So there's no shadows. It's just glow. It's just, it's just glow. And I'm going to turn up the glow on mine. And that should be fine. I'll turn on custom colors as well. So for the blue one, just, just because you want to keep these as different textures with different colors, just to make sure that the game is recognizing it as two different colors, select the material and hit Control D, and then change this one to red 0, green 141, blue 255, and just drag it onto the saber. For the text, I think I will use I'm gonna use this one, Cosmic Fresnel. This is one of my favorite shaders because I like the Fresnel look. But I'm so I'm just gonna use a straight up black material. Um, I don't have any straight black materials, do I? Or black textures. I think this one looks it looks pretty dark. So I'm just actually I can just turn it down to turn the intensity down to zero. Star map intensity to zero. And then mess with the Fresnel intensity, bias, and radius. So uh you may be wondering why I like this shader so much. And um, you can't see it very well on this, but on the blade, that looks, it's clean. It's very clean. I'll say I'm gonna switch that out. I'm going to switch that out, yeah. All 
All right. Let's say you wanted to add something over top of this. Like there's some on Model Saber that have multiple textures on one object. To do that, select your object that you want to use and then change this material size to two. And then make sure that you have a material or a shader that supports transparency. For that, I'm gonna use the free fire shader that I'll also link in the description. And that has the fire trail, which is also what we're gonna use for the trail. And I'm going to select I'll use this one. I'll use this this texture and I'll displace it with this one. And bump that glow up. Change the color to red and turn off vertex color because the vertex color will be used for trails, but not much else. That's looking pretty Right, so I'm going to turn that down. I'm just going to make it so it's like you can faintly see it, but it's not a big thing, and turn down the speed. Cool, that looks fine. So I'm going to duplicate it, change it to blue, and then do the same thing on the other handle. Cool, that's looking pretty neat. I think we're good for trails. So to make a trail, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have those textures that you may have saw. So I'm gonna just go to the fire trail shader for now. And I'm going to, cause you see all of these different trails. If you notice, they all have the same template. It's just the corner of it. So what it will look like is the top right corner it'll basically be rotated like this so this bottom side of the image is on the blade and the top left corner is in the top left corner of the trail i'm going to i'm just going to use this one for now but i there are multiple different ways you can make it you can use photoshop if you have photoshop but if you don't there's a good online basically photoshop clone called photopia You can just create a square image. I usually use 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. Create it, and then change the background to blue, or not to, not to blue, to black. So I'm going to paint. Over this with black. Right. So how these trails work, you may notice how some of them, like the brighter parts are obviously brighter and then the darker parts are more transparent. So that's basically how we're going to do this here. I'm going to just start drawing basically with white, just create a little trail shape like that. I do not suggest for these, if it goes over like this, it's just gonna show a line and that looks bad. So don't make sure, like make sure that they don't go off the sides. And there's no fill tool, which kind of kind of sucks to be honest, but uh I bet we could just use the quick selection here and just select. Nope, I lied. We can't do that. Okay. All right. I guess I'll just paint it manually. So I'll just I don't like these jagged edges. So I'm going to just quickly blur it by going to filter blur box blur. That should be fine. And fix this up here by, I'm silly and forgot to make different tabs. So I'll just paint over it with black. 
Okay. And honestly, I'm not a big fan of just a plain image. So I'm going to take one of my previous trails. I'll use this one. I'm just going to take this and drag it over top of everything and go change this normal to multiply. That way it overlaps with everything and it just looks a little bit more textured. I'm also going to I'm going to warp it somehow. I know how to in Photoshop you can just click the click the thing and hit control T and then right click and go to warp. But since I'm in a Chrome tab, it won't work, so I'm not one hundred percent sure on how to warp the layer, but Oh, well, it's fine. It looks fine for now. So I'll just keep it like this. And I'll just fire file, save as, or export as PNG, save it, and drag it into here. You can now take this texture and drag it onto here after clicking on this and going to wrap mode and clamp. This will make sure that you don't have stupid edges and it'll just look much more pleasing. So if you have a displacement texture, which is basically just a full screen texture and it'll displace the look of it, I'll just use this one for now. And now under the left and right saver, you can now drag this material onto the trail material and it will show up here. I'm going to lower the speed so it's a lot smoother and um, We'll do, I'll do it like that. Cool, that looks good. Throw up the glow a little bit. It's not gonna look exactly like this in game, just uh, because the camera in here isn't an exact replica of the game. So it's just best to keep it like this. Cool. Now I'm going to double check that all of these have custom colors on where they should be. Cool, cool, cool. So we are now all good to export this, but first we need to go into these settings and we need to make sure that the Beat Saber path is set to your Beat Saber path. Mine is set to my 1.19 install, but that is just because I have the link between multiple folders, which is very nice, highly suggest it. But the, make sure the Beat Saber path is fine. Uh, this isn't necessary. You don't need to do the steam launching thing because you can launch it within here, but it's also just as fast to open up steam and click play. So that's fine. I'll just keep my settings as they are for now. And then I will just go to saber exporter, name the saber to whatever you want. I'll just keep tutorials of it. Saber, that's fine. And hit export. Once it's done exporting, you are now good to go and open up the game. Make sure that you, you can either use your headset or if you just want to look on your desktop, you can go to the settings menu, go to properties and add FPFC. If you're on Steam VR, you don't need to worry about VR mode Oculus. I, I just do that because I have an Oculus headset and it doesn't open Steam VR. But I'll just keep it at that and hit play. Once you're all loaded in, you can now open up Saber Factory. 
and filter by date once it loads you can go to the sort button go to date and then if you have a few favorites you might have to scroll down and then find it and boom now you have this nice looking saver in your game i've noticed that the you can see that i can't really see that handle texture very well so i'm going to click on these two and select these and turn up the glow a little bit just so it's a bit more a bit easier to see and then hit export again wait for it to finish exporting and then back in beat saber just hit reload and there you go now that looks a lot better. You can also hit the trail to look at your trail. And I forgot to move the trail top so it fits more with the actual blade. So to fix that, under the trail guides, you can select the top. And then I'm going to move the camera to the side to the isometric view so I can scroll in and drag these out to the tip. Cool. That looks better. We export it. That can be to reload. And there we go. Looks better. If you don't look the way that you don't like the way that your trail looks, you can edit the material in game. So I can mess around with the glow and see what looks good. So I think I need to drop down the glow a little bit. Maybe bump up a displacement intensity. Well, yeah. So now I'll set it to glow 141. 1.41 and the displacement intensity to 0 0.2. There we go. That looks a little bit better. So now I can re-export it again. Sometimes it may there may be a lot of taking small fixes and just re-exporting it and going back and just it it's a constant loop. It's like bug fixing and programming if you ever done programming. So now I think we're good and I'm going to just I'll do I'll watch this one. I like the song. Um, let's go ahead and watch the replay to make sure that everything looks the way that it should be. Trails are visible. Sabers look nice. I think we're good. So there's a few other things that you could also do to your saber to make it look a little bit better. Maybe these, if you wanted to rotate them and just animate it so it's going in a loop. Cool, that's easy. So to do that, you could you could use the saber tools and go to other tools and create spinning animation. Sometimes it's it's hit or miss. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I'm just going to give it a shot and see if it does work. I'll change the speed to 0 0.5 because I can just move it later if it doesn't look great and then It'll probably be the Y axis that it's spinning on and I'll just I'll just see if it works. We'll just give it a shot. So I'm gonna go to the window animation animation tab and it'll pop up somewhere. I usually keep it on this bottom panel. And okay, it did not work. Maybe it'll be the Z axis. Nope. Maybe it'll be the X axis. Nope. Okay, yeah. That's okay. If it doesn't work, that's fine. So I'll just I'll just delete all these keyframes for now because we do not need them. It's 8 or 90 exactly. And it's going to be silly and do this. So you could either fix that just by hitting the rotate button and rotating it, and that'll fix the rotation issue. Set that to 90. Set these back to 0, 0, 0 just to 
just to make it all correct and then move it back to where it needs to be. Right, cool. All right, so to start animating it, I'm going to, under the animation tab, make sure it's back at zero and click this little record button. And then I'll change the X and move it back to zero so it knows to start recording that. As just preference for me, I usually do about seven seconds or frames or whatever this is. And then I'll move it to 360. And now you have your keyframes in and it will just, it will just play, it'll be good. But it, you may notice how on the end it slows down and it starts back up. To fix that, select these keyframes, right click, go to both tangents, linear, and now it'll just play seamlessly. Cool. If you wanted it to, if you wanted this a different one to spin the other way, you could just click on it, create an animation project or create an animation file and then do it the opposite with negative 360. But I am very lazy and I am going to just, not sure what's animation it is, so there we go. I'll just take this animation and drag it on because I am incredibly lazy. Cool, there we go. So now we can export that, save our exporter. Export it. Sometimes you may know when it's done, mostly by like it stops lagging. Sometimes it's hard to tell, but oh well. Anyways, it's now spinning. Very cool. Very cool. So if you're done with this, cool. You're done. Congratulations. Here's your first saber. You may be thinking, oh yeah, what about those particle blades? Like I know, like oh yeah, particle blade. Uh, this this. No, that doesn't have it. Um, I don't know, some of these got a particle blade in here. Like a, like a, not a lot of them have particle blades anymore. Very sad. Actually, no, that's a lie. I know Toxic Bush got a ton of them. Where are you at? This may have it, actually. Yeah, see like a little bit of particles there. No. Those don't have it, those don't have it, those don't have it. Okay, where is... Where's my Halloween safest from last year? There we go. Yeah, like that. There we go. Yeah, do a little something like that. That's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty simple, honestly. It's not, it's not too bad. It could be a little confusing, but it, most of Unity is mess around and see what works. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going to start on the left saber, right click, effects, particle system, and that is huge. We don't need that. So I'm going to just go down to 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0 0.03. Rotate it 180 degrees on the Y axis and move it to the place where I want it to be, which is just at the start of the blade. From there, they kind of go everywhere. So I'm going to go to the shape tab, angle to zero and a radius to zero. You can't see it, that's fine. It's not important because we're gonna mess with a lot of other settings that'll make it easier to see. So we're done with the shape tab and close that. I'm gonna mess with the emissions and slow it down to about one, maybe about 1 1.2 for now. And now we need the trails. So it's not just one single particle. So I'm going to turn on trails, go to the render tab, change billboard to none for render mode and cool now we have trails but in order to actually see the trails we need a material Ooh, yay for these for this one i'm going to use the uh, i smell food shader this one you're going to have to pay for but it just it'll blend in a lot nicely a lot more nicely with the blade and i have a few extra extra settings like the alpha texture speed, the displacement speed, so I can move everything if I need to. For particle textures, they'll look something like this, or it'll be like a sideways little, little thing. It's, uh, yeah, it's just, 
Yeah, it's just something like that. I'll use this fire one for now and add a silly little displacement. It should glow up just to make it visible. For me, this is this it may be different for you, like with all these different settings. Make sure the render queue is on 3000 if you have a transparent material or else you won't be able to see it. And then just drag the material on. You may not be able to see it. That is okay. So we're going to go to velocity over lifetime for first. And we're going to change the Z so it goes a bit faster. Also going to change the start speed a little slower. And then mess around until it goes to the end of the blade or somewhere just short. I usually go just short just because it's a bit easier to deal with. And then we'll need size over lifetime because that way we can make it not just fall and it'll just, it'll actually like, it'll actually like taper off instead of just dying out. So I'm gonna move this and change this to about Three, maybe four. Oof. Ten. Ten's fine. Yeah, it, it may notice that it's uh, my trail is not great, so it's kind of like all over the place. But oh well, there's a price to pay. I, it, it doesn't really matter for scale either, to be honest. As long as it looks good, it could. It honestly does not matter. So you can mess around with any of the settings that you'd like. I'm going to make sure that this goes kind of out as far as I want it to. And I think that looks fine. I'm going to lower the emission once again to something a bit more reasonable and change the simulation speed up just so it's a little bit, a little bit nicer. You may have to do a little bit of tweaks on your own, just fine. Uh, that looks good for me. So now what I'm gonna do is duplicate the material, change the color, and then duplicate the particle system, drag it over to the right saber, change the X value so it's on this one, and then drag the blue one on. Let me also notice when you restart it, it's going to start again, and that's not what we want. So I'm going to select both these particle systems and then click pre-warm. That way, when you restart them, it will just automatically start at the very end and you will be good to go. I'm now going to export these. It may say this table might be too long. That's okay. That's just because the particle system going too far out. It does not matter. So now I go back to Beat Saber, start by day, so I have to click all the way back up, reload it, and boom, now we have that. Again, materials may need to be changed, so I'm going, like, in the size, honestly, it's not great, so I'm going to select both of these so I can be editing both of them at the same time. Go to size over lifetime and change this down to 9, because it's not, it's a bit too big. And then I will change the material so it has a bit more intensity, brightness to it. It's just just to make it a bit more visible and less of a distraction. A lot of this is really personal preference, to be honest. So it's it, it's just kind of like up to you to what looks good and what doesn't. Like you may not like how like the contrast between it, so maybe you'll go in and turn these down or turn the glow on these up to kind of match it. I take the ladder and turn it up to match it and it probably won't, it probably won't look the best, but oh well, it's a, it's a, it's a trial and error thing. So once you're all done with that, boom, there you go. Congratulations. You have now finished your saber. You can now play with it. I'm just going to watch it a little bit. I'm 
Very cool. Very cool. Cool. Now, if you're wondering, how do I upload these to Model Saver? That, that was that's actually pretty easy to be honest. For that, you're just gonna need to go to modelsaver.com. Log in. I need to log in with Discord, so I'm like, I will be right back. Honestly, I'll just actually I'll just open it on my actual account. Please don't close. Okay, once you're logged into Mod Assistant, I forgot to log into Mod Assistant, or to Model Saver. Once you've logged into Model Saver, uh, you're going to go to the Upload button, and then scroll down, add a description if you like, and then open Tag Picker. You can put whatever tags you'd like in there. Uh, I pr click Add Tag instead of Enter. Sometimes it'll like do something funny and like actually submit it so and you don't want that so select file there this is where you're going to add your actual saber file so you want to add the saber that you made under select thumbnail that that one you can do that a ton of different ways uh you could do a unity screenshot that is the not preferred version you can go to the game tab and move around your can't your in-game camera or in Unity camera so you can see whatever you want to screenshot it. That's that's fine. Uh, regardless of which method you pick, it could even be a beat saber one for all like for all matters. It does not matter as long as it shows the saber itself and it's something that people will actually download. It doesn't matter as long as it is a square image exactly. Like it must be 1000 by 1000 or 959 by 959. It's, it has to be like to the pixel precise, which is honestly not great, but oh well, we can't really fix it. Windows, the Windows cropping tool does not do a good job with that, honestly. So you may have to use an online image cropper. That's okay. Just do that, select thumbnail and click that. Once you're all done with that, you can now hit upload. Before you do that, if you have a model source link, for example, if you downloaded a different model that you use online, say from Thingiverse, Sketchfab, whatever, make sure to add the model source link there so people know that you did not make the specific model. So once everything is good, you are now good to click upload and it will show I may have something unuploaded here that we can look at. For example, this one. It will show the red X like this. And that basically just means that it has not been approved yet. Model saver submissions have to get approved manually. So it could take anywhere from an hour, which is very rare, to a month, maybe longer. Sometimes it'll just, there will be a drought where just model saver admins do not look for an extended period of time. And that's, that's fine. If you realize that you made a mistake in your saver, this edit button, uh, for the meantime, it does not work. You kind of have to re-upload it and then the, this is, this is fine. This like the description, it will edit the description so you can note that it's just broken and it doesn't work and a model saver admin will realize oh this is broken don't apply this one but once you're done it will now show up once it's approved it will show up in beat saver modding group and pc models all of the stuff approved gets shown here Ooh, very very cool people can now see all the stuff that you guys create and it will also show up on the model saver front page. So very cool. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, hopefully you understood most of that. I know I was going pretty fast with everything and you may not understand a few things and that is okay. It is a lot of learning. There's a lot of information. There aren't very many guides to creating stuff. So I tried my best to create something that everybody can understand. For Blender tutorials, I suggest Ducky 3D, Blender Guru, any just basically any Blender tutorial. That's great. 
for Unity, it's a bit, it's just kind of a bit more suppressed on what you're actually able to find to make stuff with, especially because the shaders are built so specifically for Beat Saber, since most most materials like this standard shader, you'll have four color channels, red, green, blue, and alpha. Normally alpha is transparency, but for some reason in Beat Saber they created they created it so it would it would the alpha is basically just the glow so if you're going to create a shader for it make sure that you plan appropriately using the alpha as the glow and making sure that it's not just like a plain white it'll 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 glow and blind anybody that uses it if you create a shader like that so it may be trial and error for those as well but if you have any questions, you can also you can always go to BSMG PC 3D modeling. Someone will always be able to help you. You can also go to some Saber Makers Discords. I know my Discord's pretty empty. I check that I would like whenever there is a notification, I will immediately see it. Just because it's always empty. So if you have a question, feel free to join that Discord. Uh, Parapass's Discord, the person that uploaded this video. Honestly, I don't know what's happening there. But yeah, Parapass, how's that? How's that gonna work? Is there? Do you got? Do you got anything? Okay. Yeah. There. You, there you go. There's your. There's your answer for that one. But uh, yep. Yeah, I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me or anybody else that is willing to take questions. And I hope you guys are able to make some really cool things in the future. Thanks for watching.